is an early access video game released by the indie developer Pocket Pair. They have released another game called Craftopia, which I never played, but I heard it wasn't all that great. I remember this game being announced back in 2021, being labeled as Pokemon with guns. The concept looked ridiculous to me, but I was curious what it would be like. I completely forgot about it until it was just recently launched on Steam and Xbox Game Pass. I originally played it on Game Pass for the PC. As soon as it launched, it immediately crashed. So I knew going in that I was going to be experiencing some bugs here. As soon as you start a new world, you create a character. Not much to utilize in the character creation screen, but I'd imagine that they'll implement a lot more things later on. After you get done creating your player, you are introduced to a quick cutscene of you waking up on a beach. It just throws you right in. It gives you some tutorials to follow to help you learn how the game mechanics work. Obviously, the biggest comparison this game is getting is to Pokemon. However, others have also compared it to the likes of Ark and with a hint of Breath of the Wild, which I haven't played all that much of Ark, but I agree with everything else. Some would say that it's more of an ARC clone than anything else. Pokemon is just getting the biggest comparison here because of this game's monsters you can capture and their very similar designs. And because Pokemon is just going to be something way more popular than ARC will ever be. The biggest thing I love about this game is the progression system. Every time you level up, there is always something that you can look forward to unlocking. You get what's called technology points and ancient points. Tech points you earn from simply just leveling up ancient points you get from defeating bosses. You will earn these tech points primarily to unlock 95% of the things you need, such as building materials, crafting stations, PAL spheres, weapons for yourself or your PALs, and even saddles to ride certain PALs for the better traversal system around the world. Now, even though PAL World has been deemed the title Pokemon with guns, it actually takes a while before you can actually unlock a gun. And when you do, it's an old school musket. Granted, it packs one hell of a punch, but it takes 10 years to reload. But it will be even longer before you can unlock an actual modern rifle. Until then, you are stick to using spears, bows and arrows, crossbows, or a bat. Now, the PALs themselves obviously have a lot of similarities to Pokemon, which caused a lot of controversy on Twitter about whether or not this game actually committed any kind of plagiarism or some bullshit about the use of AI to create the concepts of these monsters. But I am not here to discuss that. But what I will say is I do wish some of these creatures did have a more unique look to them. Not all of them, just some of them. I mean, like, bro, this is just straight up Eevee. Now, besides the pals being able to fight along your side in battle, the bigger purpose they serve is <clears throat> slavery. You set up a base that you build along the way of your journey. This base will allow you to create tools and farm for items that will be able to help you on your adventures. The pals that you capture can be brought here to be used to help you make these tools and farm things such as wood, stone, food, weapons, etc. This is a big part of the grind and while sometimes grind can be brain rot and mindless, Power World does it in a way that makes it fun. Granted, sometimes you will end up sitting here for a few minutes crafting materials like why is it taking so long to create medicine? But when you level up, you can upgrade your stats and considering I try to use my pals to be the main focus in combat, I try to use the dodge animation as much as possible, which is pretty awesome by the way, and not get hurt. So I just focus my stats on either work speed in the camp or increase my weight limit so I can carry more things such as stone or wood. The map is also huge. Now, the map looks like your average open world map, but when you set up a base and grind to level up, you pretty much stay in that area until you feel comfortable to adventure more and doing so makes the world feel so much bigger because of that. Power World is one of those games that I can play and not realize how much time has passed. Not a lot of games can do that and it's so refreshing when it happens because you know you just found something special that you can look forward to playing every day. The survival elements keep the game interesting. You need to make sure that you have food so you don't starve and that includes your pals as well. At night you can get cold unless you are near a fire or wearing specific armor that is built for it. You can even have fire type pals help you as well in this case if you don't have a torch. Now, when capturing pals, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. It gives you a percentage on the likelihood of capturing it, and damaging them will allow that percentage to go up. I can have a pal on the brink of death, and it still won't stay in the ball. 
and I don't want to hit it again or else it might die, but sometimes they just give you no choice. Capturing pals is going to be a big way to level up in the game. You get a lot of XP for capturing them, but once you have collected 10 of the same pal, you can no longer gain that same amount of XP anymore. You can only have 5 pals in your party that you can summon at any given time. If you capture a pal when your party is full, it will automatically go into your pal box inventory screen where you can either swap them out for others in your party or put them to work at your base. Each pal has stats that are unique from each other, even the ones of its own species. Some might say that they are lazy and weak or others might be workaholics. There are also dungeons around the world where you can discover and find all sorts of resources and pals to fight and a boss at the end. There are towers across the map where you will fight the main bosses of the game, which are pretty tough so make sure that you are leveled up enough and prepared for these battles. I will say that I do hope that with more updates that some of these locations bring some more life as traveling around the map can feel very empty and lifeless. I do note that this game is in early access so I'm giving them a big pass for this for the time being and on a lot of things. You can play by yourself or with friends, however Xbox only allows you to play up to 4 friends at most, while Steam can have dedicated servers up to 30 players. The Steam version is also getting a lot more attention in terms of updates, so that is where I will be primarily playing moving forward. They are saying that cross-platform between the two is in their plan, so I'm looking forward to that. All I know is that when you actually beat all of the bosses and capture all of the pals, there really isn't much that you can do after that, but you can also say that for a lot of video games. And in this case, you could just start a new world, change around the difficulty sliders to make a more unique experience for either you and your friends. With how popular this game has became in the first two weeks of it coming out, I really hope that this pushes the devs to make a lot of cool new updates for the game and expansions. If you are a big fan of Pokemon, Ark, or Breath of the Wild, I think you will find yourself having a great time with this game. Guys, my name is Pedro Ordonez, also known as Gamelight7. Please subscribe, comment, like, thumbs up, do whatever you guys can to support this channel. Almost at 2,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for continuing to support me and these videos. Let me know what kind of videos you would like to see me talk about in the future, and I will see you guys next time in my next video. Peace out.